everybody i have no idea why i've been so nervous all day to film this video i know it's been like a minute since we've had anything new on youtube and since we've had new software and since it's software release day and we should make a video on the same day kind of makes sense uh so i wanted to show you a little bit about um the software itself now i'm not saying these are going to be the best of examples because i haven't used these features on a show yet and i truly believe that the best teaching examples come from real life practice so as I get some real life practice with these features, obviously I'll update and be like, oh my goodness, this is how you use it, it was so fun, this is how I used it in real life. But uh, for today, what I really wanna look at is how to learn it. How do you take the release notes and turn them into information that's in here, right? So that's what I wanna look at with you guys today. Uh, first things first, I love to pull up the release notes and I just like to read it and I love reading them without even looking at the software, I don't know, I'm kind of nerdy. I'll literally sit down on my couch and read down, like read every single, single bit, take notes about like, here are some things that I wanna go look at. And then I look at the software. So, I mean, that's not saying that's the most, but I think one time the release notes were like 90 something pages long. I think I fell asleep towards the end. Uh, but anyway, that's just my process. That's what I like to do. Um, there's just a handful of like major features that have been added into the software here. So we have the assign menu, the message center, some sheets, masking and filters, and uh, the phase, phaser speed stuff. So we're gonna take a look at the first three and I wanna look at the phaser stuff on Friday because duh. Um, anyway, so first thing I do is I go through and read it. Sometimes it's exciting, sometimes it's not. Um, and I would say today, uh, this new handle option is super freaking cool. So I'm gonna open up playbacks in here and I can click on any of these executors here. This would be like your letterbox screen on a console or tapping a sign and tapping on the executor, right? There's like five ways to do everything. And then this will take us to the new assign menu, which is very dynamic and fun. It's got like lots of icons, which I think in the end, after your brain learns the icons, it does make it faster to find stuff, which is really cool. So this executor here is one wide. I can see that. I can see it's too high. It's taking up the 200s and the 300 section. And when I click on any of these buttons on the right, it dynamically changes to show me what I can change this to. So I'm clicking on the fader here. I look on the right. I know this is a fader because of this little icon and I know it's fader 201 and I'm changing what the fader does by selecting the function. So I can change its speed, temp, et cetera. Um, so remember before we had that little like drop down with a list and it was a long list. And sometimes with the buttons you had to like scroll on the list. Um, but no, now it's dynamic. It's all here on the right. There's cute little icons, which we love. Uh, the buttons are gonna be the most exciting, I think because we've added uh, some really awesome functionality. Like this is the press of the button and then this is the unpress of the button, right? So who's been asking for that unpress? I know a lot of you have and it's here. It's exciting. It's right there, right? I'm pointing at the screen like you can see. Uh, it's right here. <laughs> It's right here. And then the MA options for the same thing. So holding down MA and pressing or unpressing this button will give you even more options. So like one button here now has kind of four options. It's actually four options, it's insane. Um, and you'll notice that as you click on the different options here, there's like the yellow icon around it, letting you know that that's what's selected. So that's what you'll be clicking on down here is for whatever you have selected in the top. Now that's not all, right? So we have this encoder here that it covers for the 300 section. And now I have what the knob is doing if it were a fader. Obviously I can only be one or the other, a button press or a fader. So when it's a fader, these two are left blank. And then when I go set these to be buttons, now the fader is left blank. And I think this indicator just makes it so clear what you're doing and we love clarity. Uh, same thing uh, with the button presses, holding down the MA, all of the above. Gucci, right? Okay, but that's not all. Uh, now, when you press a button or unpress a button, it can also trigger a command. So it could trigger a command that adds the executor to the end. So, I mean, super easy example, right, is go. Obviously I can choose go, but this is like a very quick example. Uh, when I press this button here, oh my goodness, I'm gonna draw it on the screen, duh. Uh, common playbacks, that's what I want. So when I press this button here, it triggered go page 1.301 right? So it added the executor to it. Uh, and if you go back in here and I click on this button, if I don't want it to add the executor, I take that off, right? Now, when I trigger this, it will just trigger the go command. So this could be anything. I obviously used go because it's a terrible, terrible example. Um, but there's better examples out there and I will find them and I will dig them up and I will 
send them your way via the internet. Um, but that's just one. But okay, I've said a lot of stuff, right? There's just two things I'm super excited about. I love the dynamicness of this. Check this out. This is like, this is like Executor Tetris, like to the max, right? Remember before, I don't even wanna talk about before. Before doesn't matter, cause this is what it's doing now. Um, you can move this around. Like this is just like drawing a view anywhere else in the software. It's so fun. Um, yeah, so I can extend this down, extend this back over. Now it's just covering that one fader. Like, oh, have fun. Have fun with your executor Tetris, people. Love it. You can lock it, right? We love locking things. Um, but what I'm most excited about is what's happening with this sequence right here. I didn't name it. Ugh, forgive me. Uh, sequence two, right? Uh, I've set the press to go and the unpress to go. There's probably five different ways you can do this. This is just the first one that came to me. There's probably a more, there's probably another way, right? There's always another way. Anyway, that's not the point. So uh, what is in the sequence? Why am, I, why am I so excited right now? It's because the 3D viewer, I need to turn that on, and then we need to take a look at the sequence sheet, right? So I'm gonna off sequence uh, one. Probably could have assigned a button to do that, right? I have so many now. Uh, and then we're going to select our sequence two friend, right? Sequence two has two cues. Open queue, turns them on with a recipe line, zero to 0.5. Sequence two, turns them off, zero to 0.5. The off key will follow, we don't care, we just want it off, right? Now, watch this, I'm gonna press it. It turns on. Now, you can't really tell, because I'm using a mouse, this is like not the best computers, right? Uh, but now when I unpress it, it goes to the second queue and turns off. So those, uh, all of you buskers out there, I'm so excited for you, this is gonna be awesome. Awesome stuff. I'm sure we're gonna be using this when we're time coding and whatever. It's gonna be, it's gonna be lit. We're excited, right? Uh, anyway, there's probably so much more to that. Obviously, read the release notes for yourself. Get excited. Uh, you know, I'm gonna keep getting excited, keep learning, and keep sharing, and that's the plan. Uh, but I've already spent way too much time talking about this, and I wanted to dive on these other two topics super quick. Uh, one being the message center. Uh, so the message center is down here. If I click this little message icon. Hey, message center. Uh, this is where you're gonna get messages from other consoles that are in session. I don't have anybody else in session right now, so I can't look at that. But the one thing I really wanna highlight because it's going to save my butt. I've been like wanting this all month and now I'm like so happy that it's here. Is the fact that these things that we turn on like highlight and solo, preview, recipe editing, how do you tell when they're on, right? Like, but other than looking at the button, I want it right here by the command line and we have gotten our wish, folks. Now, I, in the command section, when I turn on highlight, haha, it's right, little, little icon, right? Solo, another little icon. Uh, blind, one more icon, right? This icon list is getting long when they're all on at the same time. But I think what I'm most excited about is the time code one. So let's uh, store uh, time code one. And then we're going to record time code one. And now I have an indicator that time code is recording. I don't know about you. I leave it recording way too much, okay? Really working on that in my own personal life, but now this is gonna help because I can see it front and center in my command line. Uh, the other one that I'm really excited about is uh, the recipe editor. Um, I'm, it's a little easier to see because it's all over the place. You can look at your preset pools and whatever, but um, now it's gonna be right here. So let's grab edit recipe really quick. And boom, hi, there we go. Now I can see right here when edit recipe is on. Um, yeah, excited about that stuff. Okay, last topic for this video. Trust me, there'll be more. I mean, I, there's always gonna be more, right? Uh, is the filters. So let's take a look at our sequence sheet here. I'm gonna go ahead and select sequence one again. And I'm going to draw a filter pool over here. Now there's a couple other default ones that were added. We have a prog only, selection only, parked only. Those kind of are self-explanatory. Uh, but we now have these rules within the filters. These are new. So these rule sets. So typically if any filter that you've made up until this point has had this like attributes rule set option here where I choose like what attributes that I want filtered out. Now there's more filter rules. Uh, there's so many in here. I was playing with, uh, what was it, live. I was playing with live earlier because this is gonna show you anything that's, I believe it's outputting above zero in a queue. So like if you were sitting in a queue, like this is what's gonna be like happening on your stage. And I could be wrong, so like go play with it yourself. But I was playing with live and I like combined this with like the Zach track attributes because I'm like, I wanna know which lights are on and which lights are being used for tracking at any time. And this 
I, just, I'm, I haven't used it in a show yet, right, guys? I was just playing with it today, and I think it's going to solve my problems. So I'm really, really pumped about that one. But anyway, so this is, when you're within a rule set, it's using attributes and this. Uh, when you create a new rule set, this little icon here is the or icon, right? So this or that. Um, so we can really get kind of complicated with what we want our filters to be. And this is going to filter down your sequence sheet, your fixture sheet, all the sheets, right? We love all the sheets. Uh, what's also pretty cool is you can assign a group to a filter, right? And now this, there's this used an object option. And if it's used in this object, then that's what we'll see here, right? And then I, if I assigned this filter here and took a look at the track sheet, now it's only going to show me these fixtures. I could have done this with a world, um, but I can now do it with a filter because I can apply more world, uh, sorry, not more worlds, more options to it as well, right? Super complex. It was like such a quick way to gloss over it. So forgive me. Let's, we'll get more complicated as we go along. Uh, another cool thing about the sequence sheet itself is this mask toolbar. I can turn it on and off. And now I have all these mask options here at the bottom. So I can simply just assign, let's say I want the parked only option here. I could assign that here and then toggle between these different masks in my sequence sheet, right? Okay, this was already way longer than I planned. Clearly, I could have talked about each topic forever. Um, but this is just the beginning, right? We are so excited about 2.3. Um, check it out. And no one's more excited than Rory. <laughs> She likes laying on my lap while I make videos. Anyway, more videos to come. Uh, YouTube, Instagram, all the above. See you guys soon.